Okay, this is 3.4. We're going to do some related rates. Let me explain it first before we do some examples. Now, just so you know, I didn't just make up this relationship. We can see this relationship up here. If I pull out a 5, since it has a 5 in common, I get 2t plus 1. So this is 5, 2t plus 1 is actually x. So that's our relationship between x and y, given these two functions in terms of t. So we found a relationship. And so what we can do is take the derivative in terms of t of both sides. So we're taking the derivative of t of both sides. This is just dy dt. And this, the derivative of 5x is 5. And then we have to chain rule it because x is in terms of t. So it's dx dt. Or you can just see the 5 can come out. And then d dt of x is dx dt, just like this one. But you are really just chain ruling both sides. So what I'm trying to show here is that if we have two variables that are related, then their rates of change are related. Since we have the equations in front of us, let's go ahead and check it out to make sure it works. So we're going to basically take these two equations and take the derivative in terms of t of both sides and then plug it in to see if it actually is true. So our check. So we're going to take the derivative in terms of t of both sides. So the derivative of x in terms of t is dx dt. But when we take the derivative of 2t in terms of t, it's just 2. And if you want to chain rule it, just to make sure, since the variable is 2, it's dt dt. So that cancels. And then the derivative of a constant is 0. So we do get dx dt is equal to 2. So we can plug dx dt is equal to 2 there. The 5 is already there. And we get 10 on the right-hand side. Now let's find dy dt using our second equation. y is 10t plus 5. So again, we're going to take d dt of both sides, the, the derivative of both sides in terms of t. So the left side is y, this is 10t plus 5. So this left side is dy dt. The right side, again, it's just going to be 10. Because then you can do dt dt, it cancels, and, and then a derivative of 5. In terms of t, it doesn't matter, it's a constant, it's plus 0. So we're going to plug this into dy dt is 10. So we can see here. They're equal. So we've just shown that the summary of what we just shown is that if two variables are related, then the rates of change are related. And so again, just remember, if we have two variables are related, the rates of change are related. That's the concept of how we're going to be solving these word problems in this section. So how we'll be solving it is we can use one rate of change that's given to find another one that is related. So now let's do an example. OK, so we have this problem. And it's a ladder that's against a vertical wall. So I personally like to sketch what's happening because a lot of times you'll need to use that sketch to come up with the formulas that relate the two variables. So we have a vertical wall and then we have a ladder which are the rungs, against the wall and this is the ground. And we know the ladder is 10 feet. You need to understand what's happening. The ladder is a constant so I can put the 10 in here. That's 10 feet. But it's going to be sliding. That ladder is going to fall. But it's still going to be 10 feet. So that would be my ladder. So this number down here is not constant. It's changing. So be careful putting in numbers that change also. That's all we really know. It's sliding. This is 
this is going to change, this is going to go down, and this is going to get bigger, right? So we could call this x, and that is sliding. Let's see which one's sliding. The ladder slides away at a rate of one feet per second. And how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down? So we want to know, we can call that y going down. So after you've sketched your picture, then the next thing we want to do is we want to write out our given and also write out what we want to find. So we want to write given. So we're given a rate. It's your given rate, I should say. Sometimes there's even more than one given rate. So be careful. So the given rate is going to be a rate of one of the variables that you have in your picture, and it should be moving. So this was our given rate right here. The bottom of the ladder is sliding away at a rate of one foot per second. So that the distance, it's the derivative of that x in terms of time, is given to be, so that's the rate, again, it's the rate of x, the bottom of the ladder, if the bottom of the ladder slides away. So x is changing, we call that distance x, at a rate of one foot per second. So notice, x is measured in feet, time is measured in seconds. It fits. And then we wanna write our find. What rate are we trying to find? How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall? So we want to know this distance. Y is the distance. Find dy dt. And usually, since it's constantly moving, we can't just find dy dt. You'll have an equation for that if you wanted to find it. So we want to know how fast, when, at the instant that the ladder is six feet from the wall. So we can write when the bottom of the ladder is six feet from the wall. So that's when x is equal to six. I personally, you've seen me use this notation, find dy dt when x is equal to six, okay? So all the rates that we're finding are at some certain instance. This is that instance. Okay, now that we've written the given, we've written the find in our notation, and we have a sketch, we're gonna write an equation that relates these rates, okay? So just like up here, our rates y and x, y, dy dt has y on top, has x on top, so that's what we need. We need an equation with the top variables of these rates to relate it so that we can take the derivative in terms of t of both sides. So our next thing is how are the variables related? So we have a given rate and we have the rate we're trying to find. And so the two variables we are trying to relate are x and y. In our picture, we need to relate those variables with an equation that we already know. So if you look at it, we have a right triangle, and we can use Pythagorean theorem. So we don't have a rate over here because it's a constant. 10 is not changing. The rate would be zero if we were to write it into it. So now that I have my variables related, we can take the derivative of both sides in terms of t. So on the right, it's a derivative of a constant. On the left, it's the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. In terms of t, we have to chain rule it. And then 2y, but then we have to chain rule it. Take the derivative of y in terms of t. So we're, we can plug in and solve for these derivatives now, or we can isolate the one that we want first. So we want to solve for dy dt, because that's what we're looking for. So let's find it. And then we'll plug in x equals 6 and any of our other given information. So we'll subtract this from both sides. So dy dt at the instant when x is equal to six feet, we can plug in x equals six. 
We have dx dt at that instant. I think that was given to be 1. Moving at a rate of 1 foot per second is given. And now we need to know y when x is 6. So we can go back to here. So what is y? You can plug in at that instant to find out what y is. So it's plus or minus 8, but it is a distance, so we will just choose 8. So there's our answer. Now we did get a negative. Whoops, let me put a negative there. And let's go back and look at our picture to make sure a negative makes sense and why it's negative. So dy dt is what we're looking for, and then it's going down. Basically, it's shrinking, like I mentioned. The ladder, the ladder is coming here, and that y distance is getting smaller, so therefore the, the rate is um, negative. When it's getting bigger, in this case, it's positive. So look out for that. That'll help you. Let's do another one. Okay, so here's the problem. An oil slick on a lake is surrounded by a floating circular containment boom. As the boom is pulled in, the circular containment area shrinks. If the boom is pulled in at a rate where the radius is changing at five meters per minute, at what rate is the containment area shrinking when the containment area has a diameter of 100 meters? So it looks like we've just got a circle and we're talking about the area on top of the lake. There's an oil slick and it looks like it's shrinking so there's a quick sketch so now that we have a picture we are going to write out our given and we're given it's our given rate that we're looking for there's usually a given rate because it's the rates that we are going to be relating so i see this rate right here five meters per minute so that is the rate see the meter it's going to refer to the radius so if the boom is pulled in at a rate where the radius is changing at 5 meters per minute, it's dr dt. It says 5 meters per minute, but remember I said right here it's shrinking, so therefore it has it's getting smaller, it has to be negative. So dr dt is negative 5 meters per minute because it's shrinking. Area is shrinking, so we expect a negative rate of area. If it's not negative, then you can go back at your given and try to figure out if we had missed a negative there. So now we write our what we're finding. The rate that we're finding says we're going to find what is the rate of containment area shrinking. The rate of containment area shrinking in terms of time. It's always a given. Given at what instant? When the area has a diameter of 100. We'll just write when the diameter is 100. That's a D. Just using a capital since we have these lowercase using derivative. Now that we have a given rate and we have the rate that we're trying to find, we need to find an equation that relates the variables. The variables we're trying to relate are the ones on top, r and a, so that then we can take d dt of both sides. And then when you chain rule it, those rates will come into the equation. Let's do it again. So the equation we need has an r and an a, and if we look at our picture, it's a circle. So you have a circle, and A is area, and it's we know that formula. You do need to know these geometric formulas in order to do a lot of these problems. So area equals pi r squared. Again, area is in units squared, and so it's going to be r squared. So now that we have our equation that relates the two variables, we are going to take d dt of both sides. Left side is A, pi r squared on the right. And then d, the derivative of a in terms of t is just da dt. On the right, the derivative in terms of t of pi r squared, pi is a constant, it's 2r times the chain rule, dr dt, right? We take the derivative, it's 2r, that's the outer, and this is the inner. Now, since we're finding da dt, it's already isolated. We can go ahead and just say 
when d is 100, since it's already isolated. So this is 2 pi. What is r? r, we have a diameter of 100 at the instant. It's half. The diameter goes all the way across, and the radius is halfway. And the units are meters. So r is 50 meters. And then dr dt is definitely given. It's minus five meters per minute. And let's work this out. Two times 50 times five minus 500 times pi. We have two meters as meters squared per minute. The units always should work out since we're finding dA dt. Like I said, the numerator needs to be in squares, a square unit. Now, when we have a word problem and I'm telling you the distance is, I mean, the rate is 500 pi, that rate doesn't really make sense. So usually you do want to use your calculator to approximate it. So 500 times pi and negative, it's and that's our answer. I'm going to stop here, but you can find another video on related rates, and I'll be doing two more examples. Okay, have a good day.